technology should make our lives convenient, not complicated, right? So with that being said, let's jump into today's video. Welcome to the Digital Glow Up series where we turn this sleek little gadget into this, my personal creativity, productivity, and soft life assistant. Whether you're brainstorming ideas, editing videos, planning your week, or just searching for ways to make life way more convenient, this series will help you figure out different ways you could potentially maximize your iPad and use it for more than just listening to music and watching movies, but to also simplify your workflow. So I'm kicking off this new series here on my channel because basically I spend way too much money on gear and gadgets for me to not know how to use these devices to its fullest potential. So I wanna make sure that as I'm learning this gear and this equipment, I'm also sharing with you all the different hacks, tools, techniques, as I learned them. Now let's get into some of the accessories I like to have for my iPad mini. One of the main accessories that I have is this folio. I'll enjoy using this folio because it protects my iPad and keeps all my gear in one place. So I don't have to spend a ton of time digging in my bag, looking for all my things, especially once I get seated on a plane or if I'm taking a long commute. I like this folio because it keeps all my items in one place. Inside of this folio, I also use a stylus. The stylus I like to use when I am working inside of my GoodNotes app, or if I just wanna color while I'm on the plane or if I'm commuting on the train, my stylus is great for those types of apps. Of course, I keep my AirPods. I also have my charging bank. This charging bank works for my iPad as well as my phone, as well as if I'm traveling with my vlog camera or anything of that nature. I also have a place where I like to store a few extra cables and cords for any of my other devices I might have with me. And then of course, just a regular writing pen in case I need to jot down a few notes. Now let's quickly chat through the shortcuts that will allow you to navigate through the various screens that are on your device. If you swipe down from the top right corner, this will give you access to the control center. Within the control center, there's actually four additional menus. You have a menu that is the heart icon at the very top. You can also customize this even further so that way you can quickly access different apps or whatever you choose to add to this command center. Then you have the music icon. This will allow you to continue to listen to music on whatever app you were previously listening to music on. Then there is also a house icon, which will allow you to set up a connection to any of your other Apple devices, such as your Apple Watch or Apple TV, anything along those lines. And then at the very bottom, you have access to turning your Wi-Fi, AirDrop, Bluetooth, airplane mode and VPN on. So the command center is basically a place that will allow you to easily navigate through all the windows on your device. The next shortcut is if you scroll up from the bottom right corner, this will give you access to your notes app. If you scroll up from the bottom left corner, this will allow you to take a quick screenshot. And if you swipe down from the top left corner, this will allow you to get access to your notification center. So for any apps where you have the notifications turned on, or if you have email notifications turned on, this will allow you to quickly get access to any of your notifications from the top left corner. In order to turn on these shortcut features, you wanna go into your settings, which is the big gear icon. You're gonna scroll down to multitasking and gestures on the left. Then in the right menu, you're gonna scroll all the way down to the bottom, where you see swipe fingers from corner and you want to toggle that switch on. Once you toggle that on, you can then further customize the buttons at the bottom of the screen and you can select from here how you want your shortcuts to be set up. And then if you scroll up more, there's additional productivity gestures and features that you can further set up for your device. The iPad mini has three different home screens. I've already customized my productivity home screen. And basically I'm gonna walk you through all the widgets that I have here on my home screen. These are the apps that I use most frequently and the apps that I consider are apps that are essential to my work. So the first thing I have here is a calculator. This is something that I use pretty frequently if I just need to tally up some numbers. I use my Yahoo email and then in this, group section i have the google suite i have google docs google sheets google drive as well as my gmail 
The next thing I use pretty frequently is Canva. I have started to use Apple Reminders a little bit more. I check my YouTube Studio, LinkedIn, Milanote, ChatGPT, GoodNotes, FitnessPal, and Zoom. Then down here at the bottom, I have a few other icons that are in my dock. You can also add and remove apps in the dock, which is located on the bottom screen of your iPad. In order to remove apps from the dock, you simply have to press and hold down either on the screen or directly on the app. Once the apps start to wiggle, there will be a minus icon that appears on the top of the app. And if you select that, you are able to remove the app directly from the dock. Typically, if you remove it from the dock, it typically appears back in the app library. So because there are three home screens on my iPad, there's one, two, three, and then there is the library of all your apps that you have on your iPad. So I want to make my three different screens, one of them used for productivity, creativity, and then entertainment. So the first screen I'm going to start out with customizing is my productivity screen. Something I recommend doing before you get started with reorganizing your home screen is to plan out the ways you actually utilize your device. So as you see here, I'm using my GoodNotes app to pre-plan out what I want each of my home screens to look like. So I have a setup for productivity, creativity, as well as entertainment. And I'm just mapping out what apps I wanna download for each screen, what widgets I wanna use, and also what photos that I want to have visible on each home screen. Now I'm just gonna speed things up a bit and talk you all through my process for how I went about laying out my home screen setup. Basically, I found these three images over on Pinterest to just give me some type of idea of the organization and the layout that I'm aiming for. Once I get all my widgets and apps downloaded, you can search iPad home screen layout, and this will give you some type of visual idea of the way that you might want to lay out your home screen. Now, obviously you don't have to stick to this exact same setup, but for me, this allowed me to visually get an idea of the ways I wanted to lay out my widgets and my apps once I had everything downloaded to my iPad. So initially I just stuck to the default settings that the iPad came with, and then I would group and categorize my apps by just combining them into one folder. But over time, I realized that visually it really didn't have a true organization system, especially as you start to download more apps to your device. I needed something that will allow me to just get to exactly what I wanted to go to and not have so many distractions visually on my screen. I think aesthetically making your device set up for the different uses that you use your device for, this will be helpful, especially if you have multiple people using your device. Let's say you might have kids using your device or you find yourself using your device for a different reasons like for example I told you I use mine for productivity entertainment and then I also do a few other creative projects on my device so I think it'll be helpful beyond it just being set up for aesthetics and appearance and colors it's about functionality and intention and in an odd way it forced me to really think about okay what are the different ways that I use this so that way I can maximize this device to its fullest potential. And once I got a chance to lay everything out, this allowed me to navigate through how I use my device and cut back on the amount of tools and things that I'm using. We're gonna go into settings. And once you are inside of settings, you are gonna go to home screen and app library. And so, the first thing that you want to do is when you are in the home screen and app library, you want to switch when you download apps to app library only opposed to add on home screen. When you add on to home screen, I'm going to show you what happens when you download any app from the app store. So before I start to edit this screen, I want to first show you some of the default settings that might already be on your iPad. So what that might look like is when you go into the app store, let's say you are getting ready to download an app. So for instance, the first app I want to download is FitPal. I 
I already have this app on my phone. So I'm just gonna go ahead and download it to my iPad. Now the current settings on my iPad, which is the default setting is apps just download anywhere onto the home screen. So I'm gonna close out of this to show you exactly what I mean. So it just kind of downloads anywhere. As you are customizing each of your pages, you wanna prevent the apps from just downloading to any page. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start by going to the page that I plan on editing. I'm gonna go into my settings and then I'm gonna scroll down to home screen and app library. So this is the default setting where apps that you download, it goes directly to your home screen. You wanna prevent your apps just downloading anywhere and you wanna have your apps go to the library instead of just messing up your home screen once you've already set it up to the desired aesthetic, then you wanna switch it to download apps to the app library only. Once you have the apps download to the app library only, instead of it downloading to just one of the home screens, all your apps will now download here directly into the app library. So once you're ready to start rearranging and organizing your folders and apps on your home screen, all you wanna do is press and hold down on the app or folder that you're ready to move wait till the apps start wiggling and now you can start to move the apps and folders onto the different home screens and start organizing them in the layout that you've already planned out now i've went ahead and fast forward past the part where i rearranged all my apps onto my productivity home screen but now i'm going to show you how to add the larger widgets and photos onto your home screen you do the same step where you hold down the app until it wiggles so that way you can start to rearrange the items on the screen. At the top left corner, there's going to be an edit icon where you can go into add widget onto the screen. Inside of this menu, you can now select Widget Smith, which is an app that you have to download onto your iPad so that way you can add those larger photo widgets onto your iPad. Once you scroll over to Widget Smith, you can then click into Widget Smith and you can select what size widget you want to have present on your iPad home screen. Adding photos to the Widget Smith app can be a tedious process. So I'll try to work on a follow up video where I go even further into how to customize your iPad home screen using the Widget Smith app. But go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to my channel if you're able to easily follow along with this video thus far. This will give me an idea of if I should create more videos like this to help you better understand how to navigate through your iPad. And if you want to see more ways to organize your device and use it to its maximum potential. I'm going to share a few last notes on the ways you can further customize your iPad. Before I wrap up this video, there are also widgets that come pre-installed on your iPad that you can add to your home screen. The widgets that are already pre-downloaded onto your device is the clock widget, the weather widget, as well as a few other widget icons that you can add to your home screen. Now, if you're looking to add the dark aesthetic to your device, go into that same edit menu where you would rearrange the apps and click customize beneath the edit option. Once you click into customize, you'll have some icons that appear at the bottom of the screen. There are four different options for you to choose from. And you can also use the eyedropper tool to select a specific color that you want your apps to be. So that's pretty much it. These are just a few quick and simple ways you can get started with organizing and customizing your device so that way it suits your needs. That's all I have to share for today. Thanks for tuning in and I'll catch you in the next video. Bye.